This video is presented by Media Calico Comics. Please go to my Patreon page in the description below and become a patron. And now without further ado, please enjoy the video. You are about to enter a strange and not always rational galaxy. A sector of space called the Keystone Quadrant. Ah, uh, dear. Just one more doll to complete and I can call it a day. Although the chief toysmith of Space Will doesn't know it, he may just end up calling today the last day of the rest of his life. We beyond schedule. We are. We are. The robots are so busy building whatever it is they're building down on Half World that they were late with the parts I needed to assemble Lord Divine's toys. But the work's almost done now. All that remains is to install this one last eye. Reflected in the crystal orb, the chief toysmith sees the face of impending doom. One of Judson Cheek's clowns? Here? Aboard Space Wheel? Is this some kind of joke? Think of it, Toysmith! Instead as a thriller! That's funny! And frightening! And a real killer diller! Manic laughter echoes down the corridors of Space Wheel. Alerting too late a squadron of simian sentries. Chib Chib Cherry! Chib Chib Cherry? Was that the alarm? Too late! I'm surrounded! But I know what to do! Then I'd better leave quick before I come to harm! Take a good look, Chips! Monkey Z? Monkey Z? Do. The clown's fingers crackle with current from his blaster fire flares. And I'll fry any ape who tries to stop me or dares. Few are the sentries able to stand in his way. And the giggling assassin quickly skates towards the nearest escape hatch. I've done what I came to. It's now time to go. If I want to stay alive to go on with the show... But Space Wheel is quickly sealed. There can be no escape. Oh, hair! Yeah. Bring me the head of that killer clown! For the right price, you can have the rest of him too, Lord Divine. Blackjack O'Hare and his Black Bunny Brigade are mercenaries by trade. They like their work and they do it well. Laugh this one off if you can, clown. Oh my my, it's my time to die! <laughs> time to fry, if you ask me, clown. With the demise of the killer clown robot, Lord Divine himself, master of the space will, personally appears on the scene. Master? That cloud cut down your chief toy smith, and we're already weeks behind schedule. There's only one being in the Keystone Quadrant who'd want my chief toy smith slain. Only one being who'd stand to profit from my miss. Fortune, but Judson and Jakes won't get away with starting a trade war with Lord Divine. I'll sick the law on him. I'll call in Rocket Raccoon.
Turn your gaze now to an idyllic glen on the planet its inhabitants call Pathworld. Rocket Raccoon, you told me we were coming here to swim. Lila's right, Rocky. You did promise, and the water's delightful. I'm sure it is, Wallet. I'll be in just as soon as I can make some sense out of the symbol scrawled here in the Half-World Bible. Huh. That old book, Felonious Worship? No one's ever been able to read it, Rocket. And I'm unable to understand why anyone would want to on such a beautiful spring day as today. Oh dear, Rocket Darling, did I soak your dusty old tongue? Luckily, no, Lila, my sweet. But you did dampen my enthusiasm for scholarly pursuits while rekindling my interest in Van and Frolic. you join us, Uncle Wong? I, uh, don't think that would be appropriate, my dear. Besides, it's time for this old walrus to sun himself on the shore. Whilst my chest pack installs my prosthetic tusks. But the pace of the glen is suddenly shattered by... The Keystone Cops! Party's over, Ranger Rocket. Your deputies have arrived! Oh dear! How inopportune! The Keystone Cops Crime Detection Squad reporting Ranger Rocket! Look, I gave you loonies those uniforms so you could play at being policemen, not annoy me on my day off! Truly sorry to intrude, Ranger Rocket. We were busy tracking the snail gang to their lair, as you ordered. Which should have taken the next century and a half. But then a call came into Cuckoo's Nest, that a killer clown had assassinated the toy smith of Lord Divine. What? Why didn't you say so? I just did, sir. Right. Okay. You bozos, get back on the trail of the snail gang. While I find out who's dared to strike at one of the two toy manufacturers in the Keystone Quadrant. Should you have dismissed the cops, Rocky? If there's a trade war brewing between Juts and Jakes and Lord Divine, you're going to need all the help you can get. That's exactly why I sent the cops away, Wall. I can't imagine any crew more helpless. Moments later, the troubled trio has traversed the crimson clover of Halfworld and come to the compound known as Cuckoo's Nest. The loonies look happy enough. I guess the news hasn't leaked to them yet. That there may soon be a war on to interfere with their entertainment. Rocket's first stop is the ancient chapel known only as the Admissions Ward. Ah, Ranger Rocket, returning the Half-World Bible so soon? Duty calls your mindlessness. Besides, I was nowhere near cracking the book's code. The language of the Shrinks, the ancient gods who created us all, is unfathomable, my furry friend. I, uh, guess so. Uh, so your mindlessness. Could you, uh, scratch a little, uh, lower? Stay just a while longer, Ranger Locket. The good humor men are about to perform the ancient rites. As Rocket watches, the Half-World Bible is placed on its pedestal, and a bizarre dance begins wherein each good humor man ties, with his teeth, the straight jacket of the one in front of him. One flew east, one flew west, one flew over the cuckoo's nest. In the end, the last good humor man in line finds that there is no one left to strap him in. No! 
I'M CONDEMNED TO BE UNCOMMITTED! The religion of the ancients is a demanding one. Few attain the final cure enabling them to become as the shrinks. Sometimes I don't think I'll ever understand the rituals. But then, I don't have to. We animals merely exist to save the safety and entertainment of the incarcerates of Cuckoo's Nest. Well, Ranger Rocket, finally torn yourself away from your studies, have you? Lord Divine's lodging a formal complaint, Rocket, charging Juts and Jakes with killing his chief toysmith. I'd like some proof, if you don't mind, Divine, before I place Jakes under arrest. Oh, it's proof you want, is it? How's this for proof? Who else but Juts and Jakes holds a monopoly on the manufacture of killer clowns? And who else would profit from driving me out of business? Forgive me for maligning your guardian, dearest Lila. I bear him little love, Lord Divine. Ah, may I then dare to hope that perhaps one day you'll turn your limpid eyes favorably upon me. Touch my lady with your cold-blooded claws, Divine, and I'll tie you in knots. Could your passion for the Lady Lila possibly impede your investigation of Jake's crimes, Ranger Rocket? The fact that Jakes is guardian of Lila's fortune till she comes of age doesn't mean anything to me, Divine. I don't like either of you toy moguls. Your cutthroat competition to provide the loonies of Cuckoo's Nest with party goods is driving me crazy! And yet, without the toys we provide them, the loonies would sink into a fatal melancholia as their keeper, Ranger Rocket. You cannot allow that to happen, can you? Divine is right. An extended toy war would be a disaster. So is the fact that you're talking like Divine. See? I told you I was being driven crazy. Well, summon the rock and ruin. We're going to pay a call on Judson Jakes. From its launching pad, atop Cuckoo's Nest, the starship of Ranger Rocket Raccoon, the rock and ruin blasts off. Rocket? Did you ever wonder why things in the Keystone Quadrant are the way they are? Ceaselessly, Wall. That's why I'm trying to decipher the Half-World Bible. I'm certain that somewhere in that indecipherable tome of the Ancient Shrinks is the key to this nut house we're living in. The Rock and Ruin soars high over Half-World. A planet divided between the fertile forest inhabited by the animals and the sterile steel planes constructed by robots. With the exception of providing protection and companionship for incarcerates of Cuckoo's Nest, the animals labor little. While the robots work without ceasing to provide artificial appendages for the animals, parts for the loonies as toys, and to construct a giant humanoid spaceship. But where do they expect it to carry them when their ship is completed? The Shrinks long ago constructed a vast impenetrable Galatian wall around the entire Keystone Quadrant. Well, 
not entirely impenetrable. That green-skinned hulk got in and out a while back, but he was the only one in living memory. I envy him. It seems unlikely I'll ever escape the madness running rampant here. Soon, the rock and ruin reaches a desolate border area between the animal and robot zones of Halfworld, wherein a solitary sinister structure rises. Take us down the nearest small hole wall, and don't bother to knock. I'm sure Judson Jakes is already preparing a warm welcome for us. But even as the ship dives down into darkness, Lord Divine, aboard Space Wheel, whips up some rastiness of his own. Simply splendid. What is wrong? Your slitherness? Don't you see, simpletons? While Rocket takes care of my arch enemy Judson Jakes, he leaves his lady unprotected. Mayhem mechanics belongs to Lila's parents. Jakes was their chief toy smith until he secretly assassinated them and made himself Lila's guardian. Now Jakes and their accursed raccoon will finish each other off, leaving the lovely Lila and all her riches to me. Blackjack, I want Lila! I'll be back with her in two shakes of a hair's tail, boss. Unaware of the evil intentions being directed towards her, Lila waits on Cuckoo's nest. The preparations go well for the Great Masquerade, your mindlessness. Yes, the day of the annual celebration approaches, when each and every loony can be whoever he or she thinks they truly are. The acting out of our fantasies is therapeutic, so saith the ancient lore of the shrinks, which we all must obey. If you'd read the Half-World Bible as I alone have, Looney, you'd know what it was your precious shrinks truly said, and it would shrivel your straight jacket. The strange shrouded figure does not seem out of place amidst the preparations for the Looney's masquerade, and thus Uncle Pico passes unquestioned into the admissions ward where he finds himself alone with the Half-World Bible. I was rudely interrupted by Rocket Lagoon when I last perused it. Deciphering its language proved a simple task for one of my unbridled intellect, but the fact that I am privy to the knowledge of the ancients I have hid from one and all, especially my employer Judson Jakes, there is knowledge in the ancient writings of the Shrinks. Knowledge is power. And one day, Uncle Pago may wish to be the preeminent power in the Keystone Quadrant. Substituting a tome of his own in place of the Halfwood Bible upon the sacred pedestal, Uncle Pago takes his leave. I seem to recall that stoop-shouldered slouch from somewhere. One flew east, one flew west, one flew over the cuckoo's nest. But the commencement of the sacred ceremony diverts Lila's attention. As the good humor men dance into commune once more with the incomprehensible runes writ in their most revered religious relic. Speak to us, not with words, of your wisdom. Oh, thou greatest of books. Speak the sinister substitution does, 
and not with words. <gasps> now I know where I've seen that stoop-shouldered slouch before. It's Uncle Pico. Angered at the defiling of Cuckoo's Nest, which all animals are pledged to protect, Lila races for the ranger station. Word of the theft of the Half-World Bible could sink the loonies into a lethal despondency. I should alert my beloved Rocket, but there's no time for that. Pico would be long gone by the time Rocket arrived. So I guess I'll just have to act. Move! ha <laughs> ha! At that moment, the rock and ruin braves the blackness of a massive mole hole. Sick idea of interior design, Jakes has. We're passing through Jakes' subterranean dumping grounds. The junkyard where he discards all the reject toys and defective dolls churned out by Mayhem Mechanics. Never heard of recycling, has he? We're approaching the main factory complex of Mayhem Mechanics Rocket. Shall I switch on the shields? Natural. To approach Judson Jakes is sanctum sanctorum unprotected. We'd have to be. Nat! Whoa! The rock and ruins caught tight in the grip of a giant nutcracker! Shields are shorting out, Rock! Maintain them as long as you can, Wall! I'm gonna go shut off those giant lobster crackers at their source. Rocket Skates, Roaring Ranger Rocket Raccoon, soars from the rockin' ruin, and deep into the black heart of Mayhem Mechanics. He'd expected the proprietor of the establishment to have some sort of surprise prepared for him. But he wasn't expecting the Psycho Circus. Then again, who could? Jokes, you maniac mall! You're supposed to be manufacturing toys for the amusement of the loonies, not insane armies. Judson Jakes' only response is a maniacal giggle. As Rocky Raccoon is beset and besieged by the killer clowns of the Psycho Circus. God, some of these lethal laughers are just dying to kill me. Enjoy playing ringmaster to these deranged destroyers while you can, Jakes. Cause I'm gonna fold the tent on your diabolical big top! Rocket's burst shatters the Nutcracker's controls. Leaving Walrus free to let down the shields and jury rig some necessary external repairs. Oh, I love to repair by the Rockets' red glare. On the other flipper, there are times when a walrus of peace, such as myself, must set aside my tool tusks. For more martial mallers! Give it up, Jakes! The party's over! You're chartered to turn out toys for the amusement of loonies, not to further your own evil ends. Wretched raccoon, don't presume to tell the pundit of pleasure how he may employ the fruits of his genius. The Keystone Quadrant isn't big enough for two toy smiths. If the loonies want their laps, they're going to have to buy them from me. Boy, 
It's every animal's duty to entertain the incarcerates of Cuckoo's Nest, free of charge. So slap my paw, Ranger Rocket. Revoke my license. But you'll not stop this toy war I've started until Lord Divine lies dead and your lovely Lila becomes my bride. Thus making her fortune mine. Lila? Marry you? You're mad, Mo! Too true. Too true. Just then. Enough. There shall be an end to all this senseless scrapping of the toys I've created. Uncle Pico, you dare? I do. I may be in your employ, Jakes, but I hold the patent on the Psycho Circus. And I refuse to stand by and see my toys destroyed when their destruction furthers no logical end. Jakes, you seek to destroy Lord Divine that you might seize his space wheel, because you are merely steward over Mayhem Mechanics. The only way to own this factory is by marrying the otter Lila. Her parents created Mayhem Mechanics. Upon Lila's coming of age, ownership resides in her. You know, Jakes, that Lila loves Ranger Rocket and would never consent to such a marriage. Lord Divine should know that as well, and yet, look! The vid screens flicker on. I've got your ward, Jakes. And I intend to make both Lila and Mayhem Mechanics mine. Ain't you gonna invite him to the wedding, boss? Fear not, my sweet. I swear I shall make you happy. So long as you survive the strain of administering so extensive a fortune. Rocket, save me! The transmission ends. Save her for me, Raccoon, or I'll drown the Keystone Quadrant in a flood of blood. Warm the Keystone Quadrant? War means a disruption in the flow of toys to the loonies in Cuckoo's Nest, whose happiness I'm pledged to protect. And that's not the worst of it. Lord Divine's kidnapped Lila, my soulmate. And that really makes my fur fly.